Snass drunk. When it came to Super Nintendo music, it was the best of times, and it was the blurst of times! I mean, worst of times. Yeah, there's way more good music here than bad. I mean, you can't beat stuff like Mega Man X, or Chrono Trigger, or Super Castlevania 4. I mean, I could list like 30 or 40 games, really. But there are some really off-putting, bad, and just plain horrific soundtracks on the Super Nintendo as well. And hey, since this is the internet, the land of celebrating all things terrible, let's take a look at the 13 worst soundtracks on the Super Nintendo. 13. Dragon View. Hey, wait a second, Dragon View is a really good game. I think it's one of the best games I never hear anyone talking about on the SNES. It blends first-person perspective exploration with side-scrolling beat-em-up action and puzzle solving complete with upgradable armor and weapons. But if there's one major flaw with this game, it's the soundtrack. It just completely, utterly falls flat. If the music isn't dull and droning, it's, uh, whatever this is. I do admit that at least sounds interesting, but it's a really short loop and it just goes on and on and on. It gets annoying. Dragon View is a really good game, but the music, ugh. 12. Strike Gunner STG. Hey, this is another pretty decent game. It's a solid vertical shoot 'em up and it features two player co op. But the thing is, when it comes to shoot 'em ups, there's a certain expectation that comes with the soundtrack. Take a look at games like Gradius and R Type, all chock full of great music. And look at other Super Nintendo shoot 'em ups like Axel A and UN Squadron, one fantastic track after another. Whereas Strike Gunner STG, eh, well, some of the tracks aren't bad until you get to level 6. What is this? Seriously, this sounds like I accidentally opened three or four different tabs of the same video and they all started playing at different times. It's just a freaking mess. Eleven. Krusty's Super Fun House. Yet another game I actually like. I remember renting this one when I was a kid, purely out of desperation because everything else was checked out, and I always kinda liked it. It's a puzzle platformer where you have to lead a group of mice through long corridors and passageways so they can get zapped. It's a solid game, except for the music, which is just downright annoying. I mean, the game hits you with this right at the first level. Classic case of a game that's still worth playing, but only playing with the mute button on. Ten. Little Magic. This is a single screen puzzle game for Super Famicom that never left Japan, and it's fine for what it is, I guess. It looks like it might as well be an NES game, but the thing about puzzle games though is that they usually need some quality tunes to keep you company while you think through things, but this is what Little Magic gives you. Wow, someone get Dream Theater on the phone. Yeah, no thanks. I'll pass on this game. Nine. The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle and Friends. All right, now we're getting into the territory of bad music and bad games in equal measure. This game is especially disappointing for me because I grew up loving Rocky and Bullwinkle and Dudley Do-Right and Fractured Fairy Tales and everything else on that show. But the game is your typical thrown together licensed platformer, but even worse is the music. What's even happening here? It sounds like two little kids playing with their Casio they just got for Christmas. Ugh. Eight. Ren and Stimpy, v idiots. Look, I love Ren and Stimpy as much as the next person, but the Super Nintendo games are in the exact same category as the Rocky and Bullwinkle game, just thrown together licensed crap, made for the sake of throwing together licensed crap. And the music, ugh. It's like they went to Dollar Tree to buy their sound font. Seriously, that sounds like one of the two demo songs you'd find on an $8 Casio keyboard made in 1989. Seven. Wayne's World, oh no. This one is just heartbreaking. You already know where I'm going here. Yeah, the movie Wayne's World is fantastic and it still holds up pretty well today, but it's known for one famous scene where everyone in the car sings along to Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. So of course the video game had to try and replicate it for some reason and uh...
Ah, I feel like I'm watching someone urinate on the Mona Lisa. It's just freaking tragic. Six. Captain Novelin. This is what I refer to as a dartboard game. You can just list any aspect on this game on a piece of paper, stand 10 feet away, throw a dart, and whatever it lands on, that's the worst part of the game. No, it's the pixel art. No, it's the controls. It's the music. I mean, geez, I had trouble just picking one song for this video. That's how bad this soundtrack is. The best way to ever use this game is as an actual dartboard. Five. Oscar, oh my god. It's the title theme, and they can't even get the timing right between the instruments. Everything is off like half a step. And to be fair, the rest of the music isn't that bad, but I just can't believe they chose this mess for the title song. I feel just sad listening to this. Let's move on. Four. Oi. Balls 3D. Yes, that's right. It's the soundtrack you had to mute when your parents were nearby. Oi. Not just because it sounds pornographic, but because you didn't want anyone to know you were playing this god-awful game. This is one of the main things about the 90s that I do not miss, like the labored attempts at edgy humor. It's just so incredibly forced. See, they're balls, so the game's title is balls, so let's have a woman moaning because balls. It's just embarrassing. Three. <laughs> Warp speed. <laughs> <laughs> Paperboy 2. Why, if it isn't the infamous Seinfeld slap bass sound in full force. And not only that, the composer appeared to be going for some kind of offbeat, progressive jazz sort of thing. I feel like I'm being mugged by the music. Imagine going for a nice morning walk, then this music just jumps out from behind a tree and assaults you, just like one of the enemies in this game. Man, this one in particular sucks because the first Paperboy is one of my favorites, and the music here actually makes it difficult to play. I can't just mute the TV because I feel compelled to kick in the speakers anyway. One. It's your friend and mine, James Bond Jr. I'm seriously in awe of this music. Imagine if this was like your own personal theme song and it played throughout a room anytime you walked in. Everything just sounds completely and utterly broken. It's off time, it's the same hideous loop over and over. It's like anti-music, it's a weapon and it's meant to hurt people. Someone actually made this, and someone approved this, and it got past testing, and nobody cared, and now it's out there in the universe, and it's hurting people, and it's probably hurting some of you right now. And well, what do you expect when you click on the 13 worst Super Nintendo soundtracks ever? All right, I wanna thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.